Good afternoon, VIC. What a great joy to connect with you from different homes, places, and nations to worship God together. For those who are connecting with us for the first time, a big welcome to you. Do use our live chat where you can say hi to your friends or bless each other with words of encouragement. Church, regardless where you are, let's expect God to move in a powerful way. If in the live chat, you do not see your friends or connect group members, call them or send them a message so that we, they can be encouraged to join us online for it is important that as big family, we stay engaged together and surely they will be blessed too as God is doing great things among us. Psalms 126 verse 2 to 3 says, Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy, for it was said, the Lord has done great things. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Indeed, even in this unusual time, God is doing great things. In this time, where we are getting more time at home, the Lord is causing revivals at home among us. I know of a family from my connect group during this time of children at home and they working from home, the parents begin to take more time to do family devotions. And just a few days ago, their five years old daughter was baptized in the spirit at home, praying in tongues and singing spiritual songs. Indeed, the Lord is doing great things in our midst and filling us with joy. So church, let us become what Psalms 126 says about fullness of joy as God fill our mouth with laughter, being so full of joy that we cannot contain it, that our tongues begin to burst out into songs of joy. Even in this season, church, you and I can experience revival at home. So in a short while, we are going to worship and I encourage you, now is the time to press in, to receive a fresh touch from the Lord, receive a fresh feeling of the Spirit in your life and in your family. So let's stand and let us declare our God is still doing great things. Church, let us worship our King, let us stand and worship Him, for He has done great things.
Crucified, rejected, trampled. When Jesus took the fall, his thoughts are on you and I. He was thinking of you, church. His thoughts has always been on us. Even now, as we worship, God's heart is on us. He's hearing our praises, feeling our pain. Knowing our needs, ready to minister to the needs that we have. So I, I encourage you, church, right now, lift up your hands to receive our Father's touch as He desired to minister to our needs. Lift up our hands as I pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, our hearts are filling with praises and gratitude in knowing that in all you do, you do it for us. For all the great things you are doing, your thoughts are on us. Your heart is always for us. You are ready to pour out your blessing, your healing, your providence upon us. Lord, continue to minister through your words today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As uh, instruments continue, let us uh, uh, continue in this mode of worship without giving today. Now, one way to worship God is by praising and singing. Yet another way is through our finances. Giving is an expression of our love 
towards God, recognizing that it is God who provides. So we give cheerfully back to Him. And there are instructions on the screen below on how you can participate in giving. You can also scan the new QR code given below. Let's take a moment to give right now. We want to thank God that uh, we have this opportunity to give and thank you for being faithful in giving. Let's pray for the tithes and offerings. Dear Jesus, we thank you as we worship you in giving. Bless the tithes and offerings. We pray for these offerings to be multiplied and accomplish what you intended for. We also pray for those needing financial blessings that you open opportunities for them to be blessed. In your name we pray. Amen. This season has been amazing for our kids as they gather online every Sunday at 4 p.m. We have separate activities for kids from 3 to 6 and 7 to 12 through two different Zoom meetings. I want to thank Daniela and her team of teachers for their service and also being so creative in connecting with our kids virtually. And I strongly encourage for you who has not tried the VIC Kids Online, I pray that you will join them and I believe that your kids will love it. Are you ready for the Word of God? You know, Pastor Omar has an inspiring word for us today. And let's invite him as we pray for him. Dear Jesus, we pray for Pastor Omar for God's anointing as he imparts to us his words today. We pray for a discerning heart and words of wisdom upon him. Open our hearts to see and receive your words. And in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, good afternoon, Victoria International Church. We are really glad that we are again one more time in God's presence. Uh, I definitely believe you enjoy the worship today. That's amazing. Let's continue in this, uh, opening our hearts to receive His Word now. Let me talk about something powerful, because every time that we talk about God's Word, it's powerful. But today is special. Uh, open your Bible in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 22 and 24. We are talking about the having faith in God. That's very important. Let me go with you through this journey that we can experience the, our mountain mover. God is a powerful, showing His power in our lives. Uh, let me ask you something first. When was the last time that... God answered your prayer. Do you remember what happened? How was it? Do you expect God to respond your next prayer? Or maybe are, there are things that you don't pray more because maybe you give up. For many Christians, there is a big gap between what they believe about prayer and what they are experiencing in their real life. Many of them, they don't expect God to move more in their lives because they didn't experience God answering their prayers. For the reason, maybe don't pray more or they don't pray enough. But today, Jesus wants to teach us about pray, about how to pray and with, with a kind faith that moves mountain. Mark eleven twenty two. 22. This is a very powerful word. Remember this. The Bible says, have faith in God. Jesus is saying this. Have faith in God. Repeat with me in your home. Let's say it together. Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you the truth. If anyone tell, if anyone says, look at this. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what, that what he says will happen, 
it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Let me pray for this. Jesus, we are here in your presence receiving your word. We believe that today you will impact our lives, our heart. You will change the way we think, the way we pray to you, because you will open our understanding for your Rema word today, that we can move in a powerful prayer, in the way that you can answer our prayers when we ask according to your will. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let me go through these the three verses that I read, just, I read just now. The first thing, who is talking? Jesus is talking to his disciples. If you are his disciple, he is also talking to you. How we become disciples of, of Jesus Christ? When we receive him as our Lord, our Savior. That's the first step. The promise that God uh, prepared for us is for us that we become a children of God. How? When we accept him as our Savior. Now, now you have this chance today. You want to live according to God's promises. You need to say, I also want. And I also want you be my God and my Lord. Jesus said, have faith in God. This in God is a very crucial word. Because we don't have faith, but, but only the faith in ourselves and any other things. The object of our faith is important. We place our faith in God. That makes all the difference. If Jesus say, I tell you the truth. He said in first person, I tell you the truth. If anyone says, I like this words, anyone, or whoever this, because includes you and me, includes everyone who believes in Christ. If anyone says, anyone speaks to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. But that's not enough just to say. There is other condition. He does not doubt in his heart. I mean, we need to be able to boldly confess God's promise, eh? say God's word, speak God's word, but at the same time, without doubt in our hearts. He also much more active attitude, but belief. Belief is when you intentionally, consciously, you put your faith in action. You decide to believe, you choose to believe that what he says will happen. What we say in the powerful name of Jesus, according to his will, then it will be done. For them. This is Jesus teaching us. This is one of my, one of my, these three verses, one of my favorite verses in the Bible when I'm talking about prayer. Because it's the way that God will make it possible <laughs> what we pray according to His will. 24, they say, Then I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. How many times we, we pray, but we just start to expect to happen. We need to believe first before we say it's going to happen. This seems to be like a different level of prayer, but let me tell you, these promises as part of Jesus' teaching in many parts of the, the, of the gospel. Let me share you, for example, in the book of John, John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, says, Jesus saying again to his disciples, I tell you the truth. Okay? He is he's trying to show you in different ways what, what is a powerful way to pray. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me, can you see the the, the important words, anyone who has faith in me or whoever believes in me will do what I have been doing. He will do, he will do even, listen to this, greater things than this because I am going to the Father. And I will, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Let me tell you, if we cannot trust in God when He says something, I think we cannot trust anything in any, any other areas. He is telling us to trust in Him. 
How can I trust in Him when I know Him? For the reason it's important when we go back in prayer, we need to stop to, to start to talk about the mountain. It's not about your problems. God knows already. It's say to this mountain, say to this problem, go out of my presence in the name of Jesus. Because God is empowering you with his word. Do you rely in God? Do you do things, or maybe you do things in your own strength? There is a lot of difference in these two positions. Do you ask God in prayer? Do you really believe that he will answer you? Do you expect something great happen when you pray? You must expect it because you are praying to our God who created everything, who is able to do every single thing beyond what we think, what we expect, what we pray, what we ask. God is much more ready to answer our prayers than we are ready to ask. I think we need, in our, in our Christian life, we need to go beyond what we say with, with our words. We need to move in action. When we want to see God moving in a supernatural way, we also need to move in faith to understand how he moves in our midst. Our prayer must be offered in faith to the Lord. You know that the Bible says without faith is impossible to please God for the reason when we pray, we need to move in prayer, in faith. This is a kind of faith which moves mountains, the, the way that uh, Jesus is teaching us today. Our God, né, who created everything from nothing. When we see in the Old Testament how he, he opened the Red Sea to, to save his people, it is the same God who is able to walk a miracle in your life. But we need uh, to do something. We need to be able to speak to the mountain, to speak to the problems. Okay? Go out from our presence because God, the one who fights our battles, is with us. Nothing is impossible for, for God, but you need to experience in your own life, in your own family. Do we have enough faith if we don't have, I think it's time to start. It's time to move as a church, as a family, in other dimension. We need to have faith without a shadow of doubt. Do you really believe that when you pray, you are going to receive what you ask already? We need to pray, but we need to, be, to receive the assurance that He is going to do it. It's not an emotional feeling. It's, it's the conviction that God heard you already when you were praying. When you go to this level, you will say, now it's time to say thank you because God already answered my prayer. The prayer of faith. Faith, is, faith in God is powerful. Faith that rests in God in knowing our circumstances. Faith that trusts in His supernatural uh, power, in His unfailing goodness because He is faithful. He is the source of the power. The first condition to prayer is faith in God. What I say in the beginning, in God is where we place our faith. Faith has no value by itself, but only God in whom we trust has the real value. He is the one who has to pray in that way, in the, in the way that he can answer our prayers. Our own faith let me tell you very clear. Our own faith is not going to remove anything. God will remove it. His powerful name will remove it. The strength of faith is God himself. We need to learn to have a faith according to God's will, a faith that pleases God. How? By listening to his word, by reading the Bible, by really engaging in fellowship with God, by praying, having communion with him. As we know God, we will start to experience Him in different ways. When somebody asks you, you will say, yeah, that's my God. That's the way, that's the way that God answers my prayer. When everything looks impossible, no, He makes a way in the desert. He makes a way in my family. He opened the door when nobody can open. He is able to do it. Jesus used this picture of uh, moving a mountain into the sea 
to say that God can do anything. God can do everything to assure that God will answer your prayer. Jesus prayed asking his father to do his will, to do God's will, no Jesus' will. Our praying, if you realize, many times are motivated by our own wishes, our own desire, our own interest. We, we like to hear that we can have everything, but Jesus pray with God's interest in mind, asking him, your will be done. Okay? We should express our desires, sure, but his wants, nah? but we want also his will above everything, above, above our, our desire. Check if your prayer really focus in your own interest or in God's. If not, we need to refocus. This is it's verse 24. The condition of, to this promise is to pray according to God's will. He promised many things. The most important promise is the salvation. This is the thing that we need to claim first. He promised to cleanse us from sin, to make us his children. Did you experience him as a father, as a savior, as the one, the God who is with you every single moment? Before we ask any other thing, we need to ask for his presence, for the, where we have the chance to live every single day in the eternity in him, with him. We can claim his promises with total confidence as we are a child of God, a children of God. He will answer us when we uh, ask according to his will. If we follow our doubts and fears, everything will become worse. Confusion will increase. But if we come to God, let me say, look, trusting in his word, he will attend our crowd. I say, God is our mountain mover. Eh? In this, we can experience what we move in prayer, but not a normal prayer. It's a supernatural prayer that using God's words. We need to pray with faith that can move a mountain because He is going to do it. Uh, one of the things is, uh, do you remember in the Old Testament, the 12 spies when they went to the promised land? What happened? Ten of them, they Back, they say, wow, you cannot believe it. the size of the city, the armies, the army, the armies, the giants. Better we, we go other place. This sometimes happens when we are facing a problem in our life. We see like a big giant, a big mountain. We, we want to run out. But the true spies, they come back saying, the God, our God, who fight our battles, our powerful God, the faithful God, He is without. He promised He will give us this land. Let them, let's go in His strength. This is the attitude that we need to have. When something bigger is coming here, it's because the experience will be bigger. We need to cry out to God and say, now is your turn. I cry out in your name. He will do it. He will remove what's in front of us. Because he cared of you. Let me tell you, shift the focus of your prayer. Don't spend a lot of time describing your mountain to the Lord. He knows already. Instead, focus your attention on God and the mountain mover. Fix your eyes in God's glory, in his power, in his faithfulness. Walk in faith, following his leading, and be ready to watch what he's able to do in your life. We need to say, we need to speak to any kind of problem in your life in a mountain. It's not about, it's not talking about your mountain. It's say to this problem, remove it in the name of Jesus. Eh? When we pray, do it until be sure that God hears you already. Believe that he will answer you. He thank him when he does these things. Let me tell you, today I want to move in prayer. Before this, let me say, in the first community, the first Christians, they had a very high level of faith. We can say one example in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, and they say, uh, if any one of you 
is any is any of is any one of you sick? They say, call the elders of the church to pray over him. Yeah? The prayer offering faith will heal the sick. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Yeah? We need to believe that God is able to heal when you pray. Yeah? To open the door that you need to be open when you, when you ask according to his will. This first community was built in prayer. They ask and they receive. They trusted in God to move according to his word. They pray for hours, for days, for weeks, until something happens in their lives. They receive what they ask. They keep praying until God answers. They persist in prayer and God moves it. We also need to do the same. We need to continue praying until we can see no more mountain in front of us because God's moving already. We need to get uh, to know God better. Much better than you think that you know it already. Praying with faith means trusting God, taking God at His word, that relaying in Him, having confidence that He will keep His promises. Many Christians maybe don't trust completely in Him because they don't know Him. They didn't have the chance to experience. Maybe they didn't do anything to experience God as a faithful God. But you have today the calling directly to say, I want to trust in God that can make a difference in my life. It's not just knowing more about God. It's going deep in your personal relationship with God. Verse 24, when they say, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. We are to pray in the present tense, in the present now, in the present now, with the assurance that God has already granted our request, even though the answer will not come until the future. Eh? Pray for something specific. Eh? Pray earnestly. Desire. Don't question God's ability, God's power. No. Perse persevere in prayer. Add words to your faith. There is always room to grow in our faith. It today is the opportunity that we have to grow in our faith. Let me call our worship team because we are going to move in prayer. We are going to move in prayer that everything that you are facing in your life, God will do it. Let me prepare our hearts for this. We can grow in our understanding of God. Sure, we can improve in the way that we live in faith. Well, we need to ask God to do it. We need to position ourselves to hear from God. Many people want God, but they don't do the minimum to try to hear His voice, to know His words, His will. You pray because we need to hear from God. Prayer, let me tell you, is not an opportunity to convince God of something or tell Him something that He doesn't know. That's not like this. Prayer is much more that you, you desire. Prayer is about trusting that God is going to do what I promise you to do it. It is pursuing to do His will. He's spending time with Him. He's declaring His word. Ask yourself if what you are praying really clash, fits with His passion, His will, His value, His way. Moving a mountain is the result or the faith in Him. If you want to experience this starting today, let's move in prayer. You are in your home now. Let me invite you to stand up. Stand up wherever you are. Let's worship. Let's declare when you worship. Ask God to, to prepare your heart because we are going to move in a prophetic prayer, in a prayer that God will be able to move the mountain in you, but we need your side. You need you speaking to the mountain, to your problem. Let's worship right now to our God.
faith in God. Have faith in God. It's your time. It's your turn. You in your place, in your home. Let me tell you, ask God to give you clear understanding. What is stopping you now? What's your problem that you are facing right now? What is that big mountain that they don't allow you to, to sleep more? Because we are going to move together in prayer. The Bible says, if anyone says to this mountain, let me tell you, if you say, if you say to this mountain, to this problem that you are facing, go throw yourself into the sea. If you don't doubt in your heart, if you believe that God, eh, that what, he, what you say will happen, it will be done in your life. It will be done for you. Jesus, we are here in your presence from different homes, but understanding that it's the right moment now to say, I need to stand up in prayer because I am receiving from God His Word. Let me tell you, ask the Holy Spirit to show you clearly, to identify what is that problem that you are facing. Do you need healing? Are you facing difficulties in your own life with your husband, with your wife, in your marriage, with your kids, in the place that you work, in your church, with yourself, with your parents, with your friends, with others? Ask the Holy Spirit to identify, to help you to identify. Because today we are going to pray together. We are going to pray in agreement for different homes in VIC family. We are going to pray together against any kind of obstacle, any kind of problem that is stopping our life to experience the greatness of God. Jesus, I ask your presence today in our homes, in our hearts. We put in you, Jesus, this mountain. Because for a long time, we, we were seeing this mountain in front of us. We didn't know what to do. But today, you are going to answer our prayers because you show us already how to pray. If anyone says, Let's say now. Let's speak to this mountain now. Any kind of sickness in your body, we rebuke right now in the name of Jesus. Any kind of depression in your life, we reject it right now in the name of Jesus. Any kind of unforgiveness in your heart, we command, go out from your life in the name of Jesus. Any problem in your family, in your relationship, we command right now, go out from our families. Any kind of disagreement, go out. Go out. Financial problems, situations. Stop to attack us in the name of Jesus. Go out from our life, from our families. What other things you can say in your own words right now? Speak to this mountain, to this problem. Go throw, out, throw yourself into the sea. But don't doubt in your heart. Any kind of sadness. The disappointments. Go out from my life right now in the name of Jesus. Any kind of closed door in my life, 
we reject it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare God is powerful to hear our prayer. He will answer our prayers. Jesus, today we say to the mountain, different mountains, problems in our lives, remove it from our from in front of us in the name of Jesus. If we declare that we don't doubt that it's going to happen. We declare that we believe that you will take control in our, of our life. We put this situation in your hands. We believe that you are able, powerful enough to keep your promises. The Bible says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and will be yours. Jesus, today we join together in different homes. We want to declare today that we put every single problem, mountain, giant in front of us. We put in your presence, Jesus. Because by your name, you will remove it. In the name of Jesus. We call your Holy Spirit today to fill our hearts, our homes, our souls. Fill us with your presence, with your anointing. That we can experience a new beginning in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Any kind of obstacles in our lives. We declare in the name of Jesus, go out from us. If we open our hearts to receive the overflowing presence of God in our lives. This is the beginning of a new season in our lives, in our families, in our church. For this, we glorify God. We glorify God for this. If we are ready to move in a supernatural dimension of faith, a faith that is able to move mountains, because we are moving according to God's will in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you are in your home, keep this promise. Let's glorify our Lord. Let's continue worshiping Him, glorifying Him with all your heart. Declare how great He is in the name of Jesus. The presence is right here from this stage to where you are at your homes. This is the moment God is speaking to us and He wants us to respond. I'm sensing that He wants to impart upon us the gift of faith. He wants to pour upon us this spiritual gift of faith. Paul in Romans chapter 1 verse 11 says to the Christians in Rome, I shall impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. And this faith, faith is the gift of God that God wants to impart to you today. God wants to impart 
on you and I increasing measures of faith. And this faith is the same faith that comes from Jesus Christ, that His Spirit wants to place within you and I. And within us, He wants to birth within us the same faith of Jesus. So that as we face these gigantic mountains before us, this faith shall enable us to overcome no matter how big they seem to be. So church, let our faith arise as the Spirit of God places within us the faith of Jesus. His faith shall become our faith. And as we receive this faith, that we shall walk, we shall move, we shall face each day with Jesus' faith. And as His faith becomes our faith, you and I are going to find our possibilities enlarged. For faith in God creates open doors possibilities because now, God is acting for us and it's not just by our own strength. Brothers and sisters, you who are at home, let now be a moment between you and God. With your own voice, tell God, God, I receive your word today. I receive the message that Pastor Omar has shared. Come Holy Spirit, to visit me and to visit in every home as we surrender to Him any of those mountains, areas of our fear, sense of failure because God is greater than every mountain. So let's stand and in our own words, Ask the Spirit of God to impart in you the same faith that Jesus has so that you can boldly come before each day and walk in the spiritual supernatural dimensions and even be courageous to proclaim, to cause healing and even be able to cause salvations. Let's begin to ask God to impart in us the same faith that Jesus has. Oh, Shadalaba Sandalaba Shikiriande, Kidalaba Sandalaba Shandalaba Siriandai, Shandalaba Sorianda, Lava Sikirianda, Shandalaba Sandi, Oh, Shikirianda, Lava Sandalaba Shikiriandai. Even as this time, let's continue in the mood of worship as we sing this chorus. Spirit, leave me where my trust is without borders. And mean it in your heart as you tell God, I need an increased measure of faith. Spirit, lead with me. My trust is with a borders. Let me walk upon. with your spouse or with your family, with your children, hold their hands together. Or if you're worshipping alone, lift up your hands as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we receive this impartations of increased measure of faith. Birth in us the same faith that Jesus has. 
And as Jesus' faith becomes our faith, creates new possibilities in our challenges. For now, you are acting for us, empowering us with the bonus to move forward, to enter in the supernatural realm and receive from you the victory so that we can boldly move forward to cause healing. And as we have this Jesus faith, we can activate signs and wonders, bring salvations because we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. That our kids, our children, our generation will rise up to overcome giants with this faith that you have imparted to us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Before we end this service, I want to address to a special group of people. You may have known this, who Jesus is, but you have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life. I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If this is what you want, would you respond in the chat and say yes? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer which you can repeat after me and mean it as your prayer to God. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I know I need you. Forgive me of all my wrongdoings. Jesus, I believe you died for me and you rose again. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to this big family. And we are here to want, desire to walk with you in this Christian walk. Uh, just mention in the chat so that we know and we can be able to connect together with you. For the rest of you tuning in, we pray you have a blessed week ahead. Share with someone whom you know are in the situations that needs faith to move mountains. Send this link to someone telling them that God's desire to impart a greater measure of faith into their lives. We love you, VIC. Have a blessed week ahead.